In Line Trace Basics, we showed you the fundamentals of operating the receiver and using it to trace a signal. In this segment, we'll demonstrate some advanced tips and techniques that will help you get more out of your equipment. Here's a technique that can help you evaluate a signal for distortion. We'll demonstrate this technique using the same location and connection point we used in Line Trace Basics. We'll acquire the signal, center the tracing line, and align the receiver with the signal just as we did before. There are a few basic questions we want to ask as we look at the display. First, is the depth reading in a reasonable range for this utility at this location? Is the tracing line sharp? Are the tracing line and guidance arrows centered at the same time? When we sweep across the target signal, do the tracing line and guidance arrows track smoothly? The depth does seem reasonable for this location, but the tracing line is a bit fuzzy. The tracing line and guidance arrows moved smoothly across the screen, but they're not centered at the same point. So it looks like we definitely have some amount of distortion. We're close to the transmitter's leads, and the line turns after just a few feet. Both of these things are sources of interference, so we'd expect to see some distortion. To get a feel for how much signal distortion we're dealing with, we'll look at where our display readings place the signal's location. We'll start with the guidance arrows. In this case, we can center them by moving the receiver just a few inches, which is a good sign. Next, we'll focus on the proximity signal and the signal strength. We're looking for the point where each reading is highest. We're also looking for agreement between these two readings and between these readings and either the tracing line or guidance arrows. These two readings agree with each other and with the guidance arrows, which means we have three independent readings that are in substantial agreement with each other. As a final check, we'll lift the receiver by a foot or so to see if the depth increases by the same amount which it does. Let's summarize what we've just observed. Three of our signal readings largely agree with one another. The fourth is only off by a small amount. And when we raise the receiver, the depth increases by an appropriate amount. Based on these observations, we can conclude that the signal is only mildly distorted. If we were marking this utility, we'd first try to minimize the signal distortion. If we couldn't, we would base our marks on the three readings that agree. When the utility you're tracing makes a sharp turn like it would at a T or an elbow, the signal can become distorted at that point, causing the tracing line to lead you outside the utility's actual path. This effect can vary, but you'll generally find that it's more pronounced at higher frequencies and on sharper turns rather than on sweeping turns, which can often be traced normally. Here's an easy technique for marking sharp turns. As you approach the turn, the tracing line will rotate significantly. This is a good indication you're dealing with a sharp turn rather than a sweeping turn. Let the tracing line guide you around the turn. Once you're past the turn, stop and pinpoint the signal with the guidance arrows, proximity signal, and signal strength. Dot the line, and then go back and get the other side of the turn using the same technique. To mark the turn, find the point where the two legs of the line intersect. The SR20 sophisticated audio system provides feedback to help make locates fast and intuitive. The audio pitch is tied to the proximity signal. It increases when the proximity signal increases and decreases when the proximity signal decreases. The audio clarity reflects signal distortion detected by the tracing line. When the tracing line appears sharp, the audio will sound clear. When the tracing line is fuzzy, the audio will contain static. The guidance arrows also have special audio tones associated with them. When the signal is on your right, you'll hear the normal audio tone. When the arrow passes over the crosshair, you'll hear a double beep. And when the signal is on your left, 
you'll hear a pinging tone along with the normal audio. These tones let you work without having to keep your eyes glued to the display. With the SR20, you can follow a signal's path even when you're not directly over it. Just point the receiver's mast towards the signal and keep the tracing line roughly centered on the display. Now you can follow the signal's path safely from the curb and only step into the street when it's safe to do so, so you can verify the signal and place your marks. In addition to tracing signals that are actively applied with a SeekTech transmitter, the SR20 receiver can trace passive signal energy that originates from sources like power lines, radio and television broadcasts, and electronic devices. Passive locating is generally regarded as a last resort means of locating a line, and is often used to conduct blind sweeps of an area when there are no topside indications that a utility may be present. Passive tracing with the SR20 is easy. You'll use the same signal readings as you do for active signals, and they work the same way. It has two types of passive locating modes. The passive power mode can be used to locate the narrow range of frequencies produced by power transmission lines. Simply select 60 Hz power mode from the frequency menu and you're ready to go. The SR20 has several different frequency options for power mode. For details on these options, refer to your operator's manual. The second type of passive locating mode uses patented broadband technology to search for signal energy within a range of frequencies. The SR20 has three broadband ranges. The lowest range covers frequencies below 4000 Hz, and the two radio frequency, or RF ranges, cover 4000 to 15000 Hz, and 15000 Hz and above. The SR20 also has a special broadband mode called OmniSeq. When set to OmniSeq, the receiver will search for signal energy in all three broadband ranges simultaneously and display a tracing line for each range that has a usable signal. The signal range that's closest to the receiver takes precedence. The range will be displayed above the OmniSeq icon on the receiver's display, and the bold tracing line and other display readings will reflect that signal. With OmniSeq, blind searches are fast because you're looking at all three broadband ranges simultaneously. When you see evidence of multiple signals, you can switch to the individual broadband ranges and trace each one separately. After performing an active locate, you can use the SR20's OmniSeq passive mode as a final check to see if additional utilities may be present. In this example, our technician has marked gas and power lines that share a common trench. As a final check, he'll switch to OmniSeq mode and sweep the locate area outside the trench. He picks up a signal a few feet to the left of the trench. The signal is in the high RF range, so he'll switch to that range and begin tracing the signal. Although there's some distortion, the signal is solid and he's able to trace it right up to the building. By gaining access to the building, he's able to energize the phone line with an active signal and then perform an active trace through the locate area to verify its position. In the past few minutes, we've shown you how the SR20's main display features operate and how they can help you evaluate the signal and trace its path. To get the most out of your receiver, be sure to read the operator's manual before using the receiver on a job. The operator's manual contains information not included in this video and will help you obtain greater efficiency and accuracy with your receiver. And always remember that no matter how good the signal looks, you can never be certain of the utility's location and depth until you expose it. If locating remote transmitters such as duct probes or SONs is part of your job, be sure to watch the SOND locating segment.